This is a very interesting slide, and I found it extremely useful uh, to understand if a patient with HIT type 2, what can we do and how can we, how can we decide whether the patient need surgery now or we can do it later. So if the patient is HIT two, type 2 positive, and we have done the platelet aggregation test on the patient, if it is negative, we can go ahead and do the surgery by the same usual way using heparin. And but if the t if the test is positive, then you can use either one of the two strategies. If the case is elective, means we can delay, we can uh, wait for a couple of weeks. Uh, it's better to delay the case. Wait for the antibodies uh, concentration and theater to come down undetectable. Once it is undetectable, do the test again. If negative, go ahead, use heparin one time on bypass, and um, that's it. But if the patient has to go to the operating room for, for an emergency surgery, then we can use either one of these two strategies. If the patient is not hemodynamically stable, we can use prostacycline along with heparin, as we discussed previously, prostacycline or apoprostimol or flolan, whatever you call it. It is a platelet inhibitor. And... Uh, after starting that, we can start heparin and, and uh, can continue with the bypass management as, as um, in, in a usual way. Prostacyclines, the thing is it causes vasodilatation and drop in blood pressure as well as bleeding. So um, if the patient is hemodynamically stable, we can go ahead with that. If the patient is not hemodynamically stable or if the patient um, – and we and we need to go to the operating room, we can use direct thrombin inhibitors, one of the herulin class, and continue with the surgery. So let's talk about bivalirulin, which is a direct thrombin inhibitor. When it was first formed and, um, and made, it was known as herulog, because it's a synthetic form of herulin, which is kind of like a the father drug of direct thrombin inhibitors. And uh, it, it has the binding affinity to both a catalytic active site and an exocyte on thrombin. We're going to see on a slide, which, is, uh, which will be like on after a couple of slides, that thrombin molecule has two exocytes, exocyte 1 and exocyte 2, and a catalytic active site for thrombin activity. So it binds to exocyte 2 as well as that catalytic active site of thrombin. It has a short half-life, 25 minutes, which is one of the good things about bivalirudin. And it exhibits linear pharmacokinetics when administered intravenously. But by saying that, it, it means is when we are using a particular dose of a drug, it, we are sure that it will give us a standard plasma concentration at that dose. And this was for not a property of heparin, because heparin, it shows a non-linear pharmacokinetics. At, a, at one particular dose of heparin, the anticoagulation prop, um, can be small and can be on a larger scale. But with bivalirudin, it's a linear pharmacokinetics. So if you use a drug, a recommended dose, it's pretty much you, you, will, you will get the required recommended blood plasma level of the drug. The peak concentration is uh, directly correlated with the dose ranging from 0.05 to 0.6 milligrams per kg after 15 minutes, as, and as we have discussed previously, this is because of the linear pharmacokinetic activity of the bivalirudin. And uh, the metabolism, it eliminates initially uh, from the cleavage from the proteolytic side of the thrombin molecule, and after that cleavage, the affinity of bivalirudin to exocyte 1 is decreased. So from a non-competent inhibitor of thrombin, it becomes a competent inhibitor and then can easily be moved away from thrombin. And this is a, this, this is a thrombin molecule which has a an active site, exocyte 1 and exocyte 2. 
bivalent molecule, it blocks the thrombin active site as well as the exocyte 1. Its elimination starts by proteolysis here. Once it is proteolyzed here, the affinity of the rest of the bivalent molecule to the exocyte 1 decreases. When it is occupying both the active site as well as exocyte 1, it is a non non-competitive inhibitor means it will not be moved away from thrombin no matter what. Once the proteolysis, proteolysis starts, then competitive inhibitor. The competitive inhibitor means that the increased concentration of thrombin will take bivalent molecule away from the site and the thrombin will be available to participate in the coagulation system. The important thing to understand about the elimination of bivalent is it requires good renal function, normal renal functions. It does, it does not depend on hepatic clearance. But it's not contraindicated in patients with decreased renal functions. We can use it, but we have to decrease the dose and adjust the dose accordingly. Now, how can we reverse bivalent is there any reversal agent available? Unfortunately, not. Uh, there is no antidote available so far for bivalirudin. So we have to wait for bivalirudin to be cleared from the system. Um, on the other hand, the good thing about bivalirudin is uh, it has short half-life, only 25 minutes. So it's, you don't have to wait a long time before the bivalirudin is, uh, is getting cleared from the system. There is uh, one article and uh, they use bivalirudin as the case report. They use it in, in HIV type 2 positive patient in a heart transplant and it showed a combination of different techniques and uh, they show a successful um, the, the, the successful reversal of the bivalirudin function and they use hemodialysis as well as ultrafiltration which normally is possible on cardiopulmonary bypass. Also with the usage of recombinant factor 7 which is not easily available in most parts of the world by using fresh frozen plasma, cryoprecipitate, uh, but there is no antidote available for bivalirudin like we have for heparin, which is protamine. The question arises, how can we monitor if we are using bivalirudin? How can we monitor the coagulation um, activity of bivalirudin? Like we have uh, a bedside test available uh, and we can do it in the operating room. All the time we do it in the operating room for heparin, which is ACT. Uh, what, what is available for bivalent if, if we have to use it, if there is a contraindication of using heparin like in HIT type 2 patients? Uh, the research showed that it shows good correlation um, with all, all the tests available for anticoagulation, like INR, activated partial thromboplastin time and activated clotting time. The best test which shows the best correlation with the anticoagulation property of bivalirudin is ECT or acrine clotting time. Well, acrine clotting time uses acrine which is a snake venom and it generates mesothrombin from prothrombin when it is added in a blood which has direct thrombin inhibitor. This mesothrombin, which is formed from thrombin uh, with, uh, with, in combination with acarin, it has the same activity as that of thrombin. So it combines with the, uh, the direct thrombin inhibitors and form and neutralize it. Once it neutralizes whatever direct thrombin inhibitor concentration is available in the blood, the rest of the mesothrombin, it starts forming clots and the time, total time, is used to give us a time of uh, which, which, what, what we call ECT. Now, activated clotting time and the ECT, uh, they both have shown a reasonable correlation with bivalirudin, according to the bivalirudin plasma concentration. In other words, we can use uh, both of these tests, ACT and ECT. Um, but the ECT has a stronger correlation as we discussed in the previous slide. 
for the therapeutic level, which is like 10 to 15 microgram per ml for uh, cardiopulmonary bypass. I, I want to discuss this uh, slide in a little bit more detail. Um, it's, uh, it shows the top portion of this graph. It shows the ECT on y-axis and the bivalurin concentration in the blood on the x-axis. And the lower portion, the lower graph shows ACT values on y-axis and the bivalurin concentration on x-axis. Just as an overview, um, you can you can uh, appreciate that in the top graph, which is the ECT graph according, um, in correlation with bivalurin, you can see this more positive correlation with the test as compared to ACT, which shows a little bit scattered correlation, not as precise as ACT. For that reason, the ECT is more uh, preferable than ACT, but it's difficult to do. It's not easily available in the operating room. The other important thing to note in this graph is, if you see a level of 200, at a level of 200, you can see there's a, there's a huge range of bivalurin blood concentration as compared to ACT. At ACT at level of 200 is, is kind of like less bivalurin concentration in the blood can show you, can give you a more reliable numerical range of ACT. Does it uh, change any sensitivity or specificity? No, it does not. But this thing can um, help us make, understand that we can use ACT, though it's not like not linearly correlated with the levels of bivalurin. But it can be used very reliably to monitor the anticoagulation properties of bivalurin during bypass. 